Welcome to the Pickup Interview. Today, we're talking with Andrew Bates. Hi, Andrew. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Andrew, do you have your harmonica close by? Uh, I could have one, yes. All right. Well, let's, if it's within like 15 seconds, reach. Oh, oh about five seconds. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Andrew's going to pick up his harmonica for us. I didn't tell him. He doesn't know anything about the interview questions because I didn't send them an advanced copy. So I thought it'd be nice to keep him on his toes. So now he's got to go get his. I didn't realize there'd be show and tell for this thing. Aha. Yeah. I was just telling our listeners that I didn't send you an advanced copy of the questions. <laughs> oh, no, no pressure now. Keep you on your toes. All right. right. So, so do you want me actually to play this thing or just show it to the microphone? Just show it for now. We'll play it okay, later. So this How's is, that? this is the harmonica. Doesn't it's, it's very shiny. looks nice. 10 holes. So. <laughs> 10. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so our first question, Andrew. Yes. You have a degree in percussion performance. Can you tell us briefly about your journey to becoming a voice actor? <laughs> How much time you got? <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, I guess it all starts off with my mom, as it does with most people. Um starting with your mom. But in this case, she always said, oh, you need to, to do cartoon voices because, you know, you you can do, you do all the voices of all your characters. And I remember playing Dick Tracy action figures back with the Warren Beatty movie, you know? Mm -hmm. And I made sure to do all of the different voices for all of the different characters, you know, Flat Top and, and Mumbles and Talk to Mumbles. And, and uh, I was like, Mom, nobody does that. Come on. That's not a real job. And now it's all I want to do. So don't tell her that she was right. Again. So you got started early, <laughs> probably what, eight, I got, nine well, years? Kinda, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I've always been a ham and a performer, but, uh, um, you know, I, when I went to high school, uh, I got into music and, and, uh, and the musicals, I was a band nerd for sure. And then I got my degree in percussion and, um, at the end of, of my time at UW Madison with my percussion performance degree, I realized, man, I don't want to be a high school teacher and I don't think I've got the, you know, the, the drive and the ganas to, uh, to, you know, be a per uh, professional percussionist or a, uh, percussion professor. And I realized, well, I've always loved recording. And, um, you know, I did a, an album with a band back in the day and, and thought, well, you know, saw one of those 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, commercials for, uh, Madison Media Institute, which is a recording technology school. And I said, huh, maybe I should give that a try. And, Loved being, uh, um, loved being in recording and, uh, got a gig here when we moved to Atlanta area. Got a gig at GM Voices, uh, which does mainly voiceover, um, for like, uh, industrial systems, phone systems. Like we recorded Siri. Um, we do mm -hmm. all sorts of text to speeches and stuff like that. And the opportunity presented itself for us, the, the editors to give a shot to, uh, to try and actually audition. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, wow, this is really kind of fun. And, and I auditioned for, uh, I did a class with um, a friend of mine, September Day, uh, Carter. And uh, mm -hmm. she said, hey, you've got a great voice for this. And I was like, I never really thought of doing like commercials and, and you know, actually doing a thing with this. And so I started to drive really into it. And, and here we are getting interviewed. So quick question for you. As a kid, did <laughs> yeah. you have a cassette recorder that you used to play with a lot and record record your own voice? Oh, I had one of those uh, the, with the l little mini cassettes, you know, uh -huh. like you do for meetings, uh -huh. so I could, you know, slow it down and speed it up. And I had way too much. Oh, uh, you probably that. wore that thing out, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> and I would do, I would make up stories and different characters and stuff like that. My favorite was the um, intergalactic detective Johnny Star with two R's. Ah, that, that was that was a guy I was. Maybe we can do a crossover with Rex sometime. The, Johnny Star and Rex Tanner. This is an original character. Yeah, we need to talk about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, did you get in, yeah. in trouble in school a lot? You know, because of you know for doing your voices or making you know making funny voices in class. Did did that ever? Uh, uh, no, I was I was the opposite. I was the I was the 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 good little student. Honestly, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I was in high, high school. I was second in my class um, until I got into art and music, and then I fell down from there. That's that's <laughs> how that goes. Uh, but but yeah, yeah. And when I got into college, it, it got uh, uh, most of that was just about 
sleeping through classes. <laughs> All right. But uh, but yeah, no, no. I think uh, I knew when to place the jokes and stuff to where it wouldn't really get me in trouble. <laughs> okay. Now let's fast forward. Yeah. 2005, you founded Arrival Point Productions. Yeah. Is that right? Arrival Point? Yep, yep. Tell us what your company does. Well, we, my initial uh, run for Arrival Point Productions, I wanted to be a music producer, not like, uh, you know, Puff Daddy or Sugar Lion or whatever they call him now, but uh, but like, you know, joint, uh, um, like from the Beatles, like uh, uh, um, George Martin, you know, to where it's actually arranging music. And I was in a band at the time. We were working on our album, which was going to be, you know, my, my first produced album. And, what did you uh, play in the band? I was the lead singer and the songwriter oh. and I played a little harmonica and stuff. Okay. So yeah, the, the guitar player would write the music and I would set uh, lyrics to it. I was the lyricist. All right. Um, but yeah, yeah. Unfortunately never has, hadn't gotten finished yet. It's, it's there are files still rummaging around of that band. It was a, it was a pretty fun band to be in very pop rocky kind of stuff. You got to grow those uh, sideburns out. Give us an Elvis impression on video one day. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. Um, but but my key phrase, I always said, you know, like when we were writing the songs, you know, it's like, dude, this is this is it. This last course, this is the arrival point of the whole piece, you know, mm -hmm. and and in, in practices and stuff like that. So that's where the name arrival point came from was that was the the moment in the song where it just kind of it all hangs loose. And I, I loved that building aspect of, of writing music to where it starts off. You know, there's one song we do that starts off with one note. And by the end of it, it's a full choir with the full band and it goes, you know, insane, basically. So that that's what Arrival Point uh, was to me. And, and so it started off doing pr uh, music production and and, uh, and then um, then Spider-Man died. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're going to get to that in just a moment also. <laughs> yep, yep. So don't, 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 don't steal your own thunder here. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, Thunder, that's Thor. That's the other guy. Now, you've done post-production work on feature films. How, 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 do you, yep. how did you get involved in that? Honestly, it was a friend of a friend. Uh, uh, the really uh, talented uh, Carla Jean Davis was doing a movie called uh, Golgotha, and she was friends with uh, another friend of mine, uh, Sean Corey Adams, and we met at uh, – uh, or I, he introduced me to her at a party. said, oh, yeah, we need somebody to do some sweetening for uh, – for our film, Golgotha was mm -hmm. kind of it's 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 Golgotha was like the new movie Maleficent before it was cool. So she was really kind of trend setting with that that origin of the quote unquote evil queen. It was really a fun, you know, low budget, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, had a cool, you know, tongue in cheek taste to it. And um, all the music, uh, except for a couple parts, was actually done by theremin. You know, the theremin instrument where it's it's. Uh, it sounds like this the saw yeah you're gonna say oh that, okay singing. <laughs> well I, I i have heard that i didn't know that was the name of it though <clears throat> yeah it, it's it's like the um the the instrument they use on the original star trek theme oh okay um but yeah it's it's, it's really weird instrument and, and it's very you know spooky sounding and in the right place and now your friend yeah, so of was, a friend wanted you you said you wanted she wanted he or she wanted you to sweeten the yeah and then <laughs> and i have the same reaction then as you did now because i was just starting <laughs> off it's like what does sweeten mean? But yeah, it's basically just, you know, normalize all the volumes, okay. you know, clean up the, the, the dialogue and stuff. Uh -huh. So there's not the mouth noises. Yeah. And, mouth clicks and everything. Yeah. I created a pretty fun, uh, dragon fire sound and a dragon roar. It was mostly, it's funny. I did, I did sounds for a silent movie cause it was mostly a silent movie except for an occasional like dragon roar and dragon, uh, dragon flame throw sound. Mm hmm. But uh, was that your yeah, first out, uh, first foray into uh, into post production audio? Um, first non school based thing. Of course, I okay. did some stuff, you know, at uh, Madison Media Institute, but that was just projecty stuff. But, um, but yeah, that was my first time actually doing a project. And of course, you look back, it's like, man, I could do so much better now. But uh, <laughs> it was it was fun to. And man, I'll tell you. My computer at the time was very old and very slow. Mm -hmm. And when trying to process, you know, uh, just loading an hour and a half long file took, you know, I'd set it going and I'd be able to walk away, have lunch, come back, and then I'd finally be able to edit again. Rendering. <laughs> rendering. Yeah, rendering. exactly. <laughs> Not even rendering. It's just like loading. Oh, wow. Yeah. Loading. Yeah. So... But uh, but yeah, it was a cool experience. It was fun. That was my first time walking into a movie theater to see the the work that I had done because mm -hmm. she had actually rented out a movie theater for the premiere, and oh, it was nice. really cool. It was fun. And remind everyone once again the name of that film if they want to check it out. That was called Golgotha. 
Go Gotham. Yeah, All right. Yeah, it's it's about a, a an a evil queen, you know, kind of like Maleficent and okay. how she kind of got to the way she did before she became super evil. Can people buy it on Netflix or? I don't think it's on Netflix. I don't know if, if, if she's actually released it outside of just, uh, yeah, I have to check with that. Yeah. Carla Jean Davis is the director and she's, she's, uh, uh, awesome. Okay. Um, in fact, she, uh, it was on, you remember that old show on sci- sci-fi? I think that was, had the directors. It was kind of a reality show where they'd have directors go on like, uh, you know, top model or something like Not that. Not face off. Not Face Off. No, this is this was before Face Off. Uh-huh. This is a while ago, and I think, and if I remember right, she was actually a contestant on that. Oh, okay. And uh, I don't remember how well she did, my but first yeah, time so she. About that. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a while ago, and it was it was kind of a it was where directors would go on, and you know, just like in all the reality mm-hmm. competition shows, but they were actually making movies in a limited amount of time. So, okay, speaking of movies, we are yes. now at the. Uh, climax of the interview, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. We'll see. Oh, oh. And that is discussion of your production, Death of Spider Man, the Death of Spider Man. Yeah. You produced and yeah. starred in a fan motion comic called yep, The yep. Death of Spider Man. Yep. I've checked this thing out. It is amazing. Okay, so all of you <laughs> out there listening, stop whatever you're doing right now. Take the bottle out of your baby's mouth, whatever you have to do. Go to your computer, go to YouTube, and search for the death of Spider-Man and watch this thing. It is amazing. Great actors, great sound effects, great sound design. Over a million views on YouTube. Almost two. Almost. Oh, it's almost two. Seven. That's right. A million seven right now, yeah. So, Andrew, what was the genesis for that project? Well, the, uh, that actually kind of came about because um, there was talk that there was going to be a new Spider-Man cartoon show um, done by Disney and, and Man of Action and Paul Dini, the writer from Batman, the animated series, and a bunch of other stuff. And and uh, I found out that Paul Dini was going to be at Dragon Con, which is a big um, Atlanta-based uh, science fiction geek convention. You know, it's everything. It's everything is there. It's awesome. And I thought, well weirder things have happened. So I, I sat down and I actually recorded some ultimate Spider-Man because in this, in ultimate universe, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's kind of, it was a restart, like a fresh new universe that Marvel did in 2000 ish. Um, where in this case, uh, Peter Parker was only 16 years old and, uh, the, he never like you know now he's in the 30s in the regular universe, but in ultimate, he was only 16 years old. And, um, this cartoon was going to be based on that. And I said, well, hey, you know, I, I could do a 16-year-old voice pretty okay. Mm-hmm. And and uh, maybe, you know, I would be a really good Spider-Man. So, so this whole thing was I, like an audition. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Wow. I, I recorded a few uh, uh, little mini scenes from my favorite, uh, uh, you know, some funny stuff from from Death of, or from the original Spider-Man comics, you know, mostly from his origin and stuff, and recorded it and... You know, did did the classic uh, uh, nerd thing, went there and said, hey, by the way, here's a CD of me as Spider-Man, if you like to listen to it. <laughs> and of course, nothing came from it. But um, just for fun, I was I was putting demos online and I put this uh, uh, this Spider-Man samples online and a guy named Craig from the UK actually heard it. And said, man, I love your, your, your 16 year old Peter Parker. Um, I really want to do a motion comic based on Ultimate Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a scene that, uh, it's a really cute scene where for the first time Peter Parker admits to Mary Jane that he is Spider Man. And of course she laughs right in his face. And, um, but it was, a, it was a cute scene. And I was like, man, that would be, that would be a lot of fun. And I know a couple people who would be great to play, uh, um, Mary Jane, who was September Carter. And, mm-hmm. um, um, Aunt May had a part in this and that, uh, my friend, Jean Alexander, she's an amazing actress. In fact, she just did her first Sonic commercial a couple of days ago. So she, you're going to hear a lot of her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but we got into the studio and it was just such a blast. We had so much fun and the audio turned out great. And un- unfortunately how, uh, things usually go with, uh, unpaid projects, uh, kind of stalled a little bit and the video never really got to being produced. I know Craig was super busy and stuff, but yeah. That, that put the taste in my mouth. That was like, that was kind of fun. And, and it was a fun way to do, you know, 
to do animation, but still using, you know, just the panels. Because motion comics, I don't know if you know, are actually taking the panels straight from the comic books and then adding limited animation to them. Mm -hmm. So nothing that it's, if there's, you know, like an arm might move or something like that. And some of the fancier ones, they actually have like, you know, kind of heads turning and stuff. But uh, so those have to be redrawn, by the way. Um, a, a large portion portions of them are um, when Drew did the death of Spider-Man. I mean, he would he took out all of the word balloons, you know, in, mm-hmm. in comic books, you see, you see speech in word balloons. He actually edited all of those out and then repasted them back in so they could pop in with the dialogue. Oh. But everything that was behind the, you know, uh, the dialogue or the word balloon originally, he had to redraw that mm-hmm. back in. Or redraw so an arm balloon, raising up into a different exactly. position. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a lot of work. So, uh, it was a lot of work. We put a lot of time into it. So, um, when I heard that, that, you know, Marvel was going to potentially kill off the, uh, um, ultimate version of Peter Parker, I'm like, man, that's my favorite version. Mm-hmm. That could be a pretty cool project to do, though. I mean, a lot of fun drama in something like that. And, and if it turns out to be an interesting story, then, then maybe we should look into, to doing it. So I, mm-hmm. the comics came out and it was really emotional and well done. So I was like, okay, I want to try and do this. And again, just hanging out with somebody at a party, I bumped into Drew, who happens to be an animator and happens to uh, really love Ultimate Spider-Man. And I said, hey. Uh, and in fact, it was the same friend who introduced me to, uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, Carla Jean back in the day. It was the same friend who introduced me to both of them. So mm-hmm. uh, he knows everybody pretty much. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, he said he would be interested and we started talking and, uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. I found a bunch of voice actors that would fit the parts and, and he took, uh, he was able to, again, do all the animation for it. And on October 18th, my mom's birthday of 2011, uh, we released it online. And since then I've, I've never been as proud to bum out so many people. (laughs) (laughs) And so what started out is just a way to impress, is it Dini you said? Ed, Ed, yeah, Paul Dini, Dini yeah. at Dragon Con snowballed into something mm-hmm. much bigger. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just something fun turned into something that, you know, two million people, almost two million people have seen. And the guy who wrote the comic has seen it and commented on it and he said he loved it. And, oh, wow. Um, yeah, the, uh, the the artist, we gave him a DVD of it and he said he was, he'd heard about it and was impressed by it. In fact, the, uh, the writer, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, um, featured it on his... Um, his Tumblr page of, of, of favorite videos that were based on his work, which is cool. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah we've had, a, had a few different interviews and it's been featured on a bunch of the different geek websites and stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to know that it's, it's been out there in such a big way. And, and, you know, usually when you put something out there like that, the, the chances are there's, there's always the trolls, you know, the internet trolls, the people mm-hmm. who are going to rip on it just the to rip fan boys. on it. The uh, fanboys. Even worse than the fanboys, just the people who, who, you know, just, want to dislike it to dislike it you know right. to say something bad this project we've gotten so few of those i mean if if you look on it uh, it's like every day it's like there's hundreds of thousands of likes and like 500 dislikes and that's for something that's been out for three years that's kind of unheard of to me and everyone pretty much comments on you know how much they appreciate it and like it so mm-hmm. that was that was kind of a shocking but awesome thing to uh to have people not just rip on it to rip on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I am one of those people who definitely likes it. So again, awesome. to, well, thank you, sir. Yeah, to everyone who hears this interview, stop what you're doing. Stop fixing your flat tire right now. You can get fix a flat at Walmart <laughs> later on for that and go to YouTube and watch this death of Spider-Man motion comic. It's fantastic. Have, have a box of Kleenex ready. Cause it's, it's yeah. I've, I've, we, it, it's so cool that it's made really tough people cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is a tearjerker. So, Mm -hmm. But we won't give away any spoilers here. Andrew, speaking of independent projects, Mm -hmm. you've recently completed a project called Rex Tanner and the Sword of Damocles, where you played the lead character. Yes, I did. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? Oh, that was a blast. That was... um... Uh, the amazing Katie Lee from uh, from L.A. and then tons of different cartoon projects. If, if you you might not recognize her name, but as soon as you go into IMDb, you'll say, oh, wait, I know that character. I know that character. Well, she uh, came to me, said that they were working on this awesome project called Rex Tanner, and she needed some voice acting and asked if I'd audition, and I did. And and I ended up getting the part of Rex Tanner himself, and it was uh, it was awesome. I mean, it was it's a such a cool 
action adventure. Uh, very, very, uh, it's been described as like a kind of an audio comic book. It's uh, take a little bit of the Rocketeer and a little bit of Indiana Jones and mush them all together. And, and, <laughs> and you get Rex Tanner, who's uh, kind of the, the new pulp hero for, uh, for this era. So. Uh, and, and I got to I got to hang out with some really amazing actors, and uh, uh, we we recorded, and it, lots of laughs were had. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a cool adventure, man. It's it's a, an amazing world that Olafemi has created with um, with Rex Tanner's uh, uh, kind of universe there. So. Olufemi, that's the the writer. Yes, yes, he's the creator of Rex Tam- uh, Rex Tanner, uh, and the the writer, and he uh, bopped in and gave us some uh, some inside scoops on the stuff that you don't get in the uh, our first adventure. It's kind of the you know like a uh, you're dropped in in the middle of of all the adventures that Rex and his partner uh, Mick have had. So uh, uh, he gave us kind of the background stuff, the stuff that that, that the regular people don't know about, which is exciting. So he was. It was fun to talk to him and get his kind of uh, takes on all of the characters. Um, but yeah, he, he created a really, really interesting world and interesting. Uh, I was just describing it actually to a friend of mine today, how Rex's powers kind of work. He, he, he has this omnidial that, uh, that works on basically um, inverse potential energy. <laughs> so he's able mm-hmm. to, to build up energy by doing stuff and, and, when he's able to push the button, it gives him this extra superpower, which is cool. So it's kind of got that uh, uh, limited. Uh, uh, he can be a Superman, but only for a little bit of time, and then it goes away. Usually at the wrong time, and uh, mm-hmm. he has to deal with the consequences of where he's left off without having super speed or super invulner- invulnerability or anything. So kind of like the coyote when he uh, run- chasing the road runner, he runs off the cliff. And- exactly. Exactly. And he. And then he stops and <laughs> I think I did record that actually, which was fun. <laughs> yes, and, and, and I, I learned from, from Katie how to talk like you were underwater, which is really fun too. Because he falls underwater at one point. So that was That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now uh, where can people find out more about the about the your Rex Tanner project? Uh, Rex Tanner, you can go to RexTanner.com. Uh, which is, he's got his own website. He's actually got a Facebook as well. In fact, he's more socially connected than I am, which is funny. Um, <laughs> especially being that he's, he's in, got a bigger geek, but he does. He, <laughs> well, I don't know. He, he, he brags about his geek button, but I don't know how big it really is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but also on audiblescripts.com. Audible Scripts is the company that, that produced it, and they do some amazing, really entertaining, um, um, basically audio dramatizations of... Um, of screenplays. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, Rex Tanner is one of them. You had a narrator. You can, it, it, he explains all the action that's going on with a full cast. And, uh, but yeah, check it out at rextanner.com. It's available to, uh, to download right now, actually. All right. Great. Now our next question. <laughs> okay, Andrew, it's time to get a little serious <laughs> now here. All right. We've got, okay. we, we've got a very deep, very, disturbing question for you okay Okay. talk to me i'm ready if you had to give up voice acting what type of work would you do wow that is hard man i mean i guess uh, i would say doing the music thing but you know the music has changed a lot the music uh uh entertainment industry is now definitely a music business industry so that's kind of hard man Mm -hmm. because it's so much fun to voice act and to be goofy and to have fun i mean i guess i guess i would just do regular acting (laughs) like uh, visual acting or or, uh, comedy in that kind of a vein that would i guess that's where i would go i don't know if uh if that's cheating to (laughs) to be almost quite the same but not quite (laughs) nope that's not cheating that's a good answer acting okay yeah, acting and comedy kind of stuff because because mm-hmm. uh, I do love that. But uh, but that's what I love about voice acting is that you can be anything and anyone. You know, I'm never gonna actually put on Spider Man's tights at at least. You know, not <laughs> in a way that anyone will ever see outside. Yeah, but of Rose would think anyway. you would look good in, in Spidey tights. Well, <laughs> anyway, and that's um, a nice segue into our next question. <laughs> Andrew, you've been married to your wife, Sally Rose, for how many years? 
Uh, we've been married since uh, October 10th of 2010, so just under four years, if I do the math right. <laughs> okay. Were you? Did you know each other in high school or college? No, we actually met uh, uh, just after college for me, and she uh, was in her undergrad at UW Whitewater. She's a uh, an amazing singer. She was actually uh, she's an opera singer, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, she we I worked at a music store in the uh, print music department, and she came in for some uh, print music, and uh, I just had myself as the upsell. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, you're a good salesman. You know, it's uh, when you're working with a product like this, it, it, you got to <laughs> it sells itself, right? <laughs> it sells itself, really. <laughs> it does. No, I guess she had a crush on me for like a year, which was awesome. So, oh, nice. So <clears throat> she she had already done the the you know the the up, ups and downs of the product beforehand. So you you, so you kept wondering me. why she was coming in buying the uh, buying the uh, thong song single over and over again, huh? <laughs> By uh, what was that you guy's know, name? I can't remember. She is Cisco. Cisco. She was a big Cisco fan. Oh, really? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, okay. no. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, Sally performed a role in your Spidey project. Was she easy to work with? <laughs> Uh, you know, um, it was her first time doing anything like that, and it was fun. I gave her the the, the part of Doris, the next door neighbor, and mm-hmm. we actually had a wonderful emotional moment because she's telling Aunt May that these bad guys are beating up Sp- uh, Peter Parker. So uh, mm-hmm. it was, yeah, no, it was it was a new experience for her. I mean, she's she's a performer and she you know does performance on stage, so it was cool t- for her to see what it's like behind the mic, you know, and to mm-hmm. work with her to get the right performance out. And she, I think she liked it quite a bit. I know she's she's proud to say that she's Doris. Darn it! <laughs> All right, okay, you ready to have some fun? I'm always ready. Now to have the fun. pressure's off. Now we we go to the easy questions. Okay, this is cool. word of Sagittarius. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I might have a question here that that might okay that that might be good a good answer for. We'll see. Okay. 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 So this is word association. I'm going to I'm going to give you a word or phrase, and I want you to react or respond with three words or less as fast as you can. Okay. Okay. okay are you ready? And just uh, I'll try. I, I'm I'm an overthinker, so so I'll, I'll have to keep fast. So we'll see what to do. <laughs> All right, this will be fun. Okay. okay, here we go. Ben Affleck as Batman. Interesting, uh, trusting, uh, hopeful. <laughs> okay, DC versus Marvel. Uh, Batman beats all. Pay to play. Uh, good way to make money. <laughs> Michael Bay. Boom. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the most simple thing to say about him. Uh, don't like Transformers. Sorry, people. Unma- I like the Transformers, but I don't like those movies. I'm sorry. Okay. Unmanned drones. Um, what's your problem with men? Audiobook. Uh, <laughs> puts money in my pocket. Thank you. <laughs> Halo. Uh, I'm no angel. Halo the game. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what you meant, but I had to go for the joke. Um, never played, but awesome voice acting. That was more than three. Sorry. That's okay. Christopher Nolan. <laughs> uh, genius and Dark Knight is one of the best movies ever. I am. <laughs> uh, I am. Andrew, <laughs> All right. I am. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I am, Andrew. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, hi, I am Andrew. Has arrived. Mm. Okay. Yes. Great. Well, the first thought actually was I am Iron Man, but uh, oh, you could have said that. That's fine. I could have said that. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't want to lie because <laughs> I'm not really Iron Man. <laughs> I'm Spider Man. Come on. That's right. Yeah, you can't you can't pull dual duty unless you're Ben Affleck, right? <laughs> Daredevil and Batman. <laughs> Okay. Yes, or Ryan Reynolds as uh, Green Lantern oh, in Deadpool. Don't remind me. <laughs> don't remind See, me. See, I didn't Green mind. Gr- I didn't mind Green Lantern that much. I just think that they 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 amped it up to to be the parallax bad guy too quickly. I could see. You know, if, if, if the writing was, was a little bit different, uh, that Ryan Reynolds could have been a good Hal Jordan. I think there were, if my recollection is correct, I'll, I'll have to check IMDb after this interview, but mm-hmm. I think there were six screenwriters on Green Lantern. 
which wow. is, you know, six credited screenwriters. I mean, who knows how many other people yeah, put, put that's, you know, got on the keyboard on that one. So it, it wow, was too many, too many cooks, too many cooks, that a spoiled soup. <laughs> and as an aspiring screenwriter myself, I just felt it was a, it was too disjointed as a story. Yes. Very disjointed. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. things were happening like uh, the scene where he wakes up in the bed with some hot chick. We mm -hmm. never, we never know who she is. We never yeah, know how, yeah. we never see how they meet. We never know, is this his regular steady girlfriend? Is this someone he picked up in the club the night before? Right, is this right. his brother, his uh, best friend's sister? I mean, just absolutely no setup for that scene whatsoever. Yeah. So. See, that's the, that's the thing. I mean, ever since Iron Man 1 and then that same summer came The Dark Knight, geek movies and comic book movies you, they can't just be, okay, put a guy on a suit and people will buy tickets. People are now realize, wait a second, you can make some awesome movies off of these characters. I mean, look at most of what Marvel has done. Look at, you know, the whole Dark Knight trilogy. You know, it, you can't just, they can't just make a, a movie, a big flashy movie. There actually has to have some story and character. And, and people, if you treat it with respect, you can make an amazing movie. Yeah. Who knows what Warner Brothers was thinking when they, when they put that. That was Warner Brothers who made... Yeah. Uh, Green Lantern. Like, yeah, Green Lantern. Yeah. Well, I think they were hoping to to make it another Iron Man so they could start their shared universe like Marvel, but I think they that didn't didn't work out Big as well flop. as they hoped it would. Ryan Reynolds is yeah, out. Yeah. He'll never play Green yeah, Lantern again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for the for the new DC movies though. It's, it's I'm I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. They are yeah, th there's a lot of stuff that they're lining up that that I think mm -hmm. has the potential to be very compelling and and and, and catch on. Yep. Pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, the look of, of Ben Affleck's Batman from that one photo was just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And, I and mean, it was I mean, only I mean, in black and white. It looked amazing. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. And when I actually see it in color, and if it, I mean, Kevin Smith says that it's basically the exact same outfit that he wears in uh, Dark Knight Returns when he's fighting the Joker, that kind of midnight blue against the, the gray. That's, that's going to look good. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Sorry, you, you touched my geek button there. Oh, no problem. <laughs> no problem. I want to pound it again. Sweet. That's what my geek button sounds like. It's got more edge than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a it's a manly geek button. So yeah, you you do, you put in some sweetening sweetening at the end, right? <laughs> there you go. That was what got was. all those uh, RMS values uh, straightened out there. <laughs> Okay, so Andrew, thank you very much for taking Thanks. the time to speak with us. Awesome, thank you for the invite. I've, I'm like I say, I'm honored, and I hope I'm interesting enough to uh, to be worth talking to. <laughs> now, I, I'm sure that won't be a problem. Will <laughs> you play us something to take us out on your harp harmonica? Uh, I can do that. I can do that. All right. All right. Well, thanks again, and and, and here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 